Andy here. All right, we're going to go over several different things in this video, uh, expanding on my last video. Uh, last, watch my last video on how to change these old APC UPSs. This is the model number of mine, right? Good, good. So, how in the last video, I showed you how to use Hyper Terminal in order to change it so instead of uh, its float voltage being 31.8, uh, being 29.4 or whatever you want it to be for a 7S. You can do any number of voltages. You can do 8S, 7S, 6S. Um, it seems to accept them all. Um, but I only deal with 7S, so I'm only going to be focusing on anything pertaining to that. But you can go all the way down to like 0 0.13 volts, but then it'll give you a battery error. So you got to keep your float voltage at least where uh, somewhere up around the 29.4 um, wherever your battery float is or preferred all right so this is the website right up here apc fax whatever it's called the brain dead start and these are just how to do it pretty simple so we're going to do that first once we show you that then i'm going to go over a few tricks with the error codes that we uh, didn't have solved in the last video and then we're going to talk about uh, wattage consumption at idle which is unfortunate okay so this is how you do it it's unplugged plugs on the ground it's plugged into your batteries hold release there you go so that's how you start it up without line voltage. Um, pretty simple. Um, but you have to release when you hear the long beep. You have to release while it's beeping. So, anyways, that's that. And it's uh, sent out question marks, which means that it's turned on. And to talk back to it, you press Shift Y, and it replies back SM. I don't know why it does the explanation points. Shift B, it's set at 28.48 volts. Okay. Um, you know, 28.48. That's because it's on the batteries right now. So that's another problem I had, is uh, setting your float voltage. You need to do it while it's on line power. So right now it's it's on this. Um, let's plug it in and I'll show you that. Try not to get ahead of ourselves. All right, plugging it in. Plugged in now. There we go. It is switched to line voltage. All right. So let's let's do this again. It's going to recover. It's going to slowly come back up to proper voltage. All right. It's going to take time. All right. Shift B. 28.75, right? So these are the hexadecimal numbers that I've been working on. And I'm going to show you how to deal with this. So I'm going to push 1, 1. All right, we're in program mode. Shift B. All right, now we're going to go up until we get an error code. So we're going up in voltage. You don't have to save it. You don't have to press enter. It, it it reacts in real time, which is nice. There we go. Right away, we get into the air voltage. So this is what you're probably going to get while you're fiddling around. And that's at E5, um, hexadecimal E5. But these numbers, this is, this is on a microchip that acts like a potentiometer to try and control a set voltage. So these numbers mean absolutely nothing at all. They go all over the place. Literally, they're just placeholders so yours will be different even with the same pack it just depends on your battery voltage so let's keep going down Oops, shift b we're going down negative nope still won't hmm still acting odd okay there we go e0 right so at E0, um, which for me, so I press the up arrow and it saves it. 28.35 volts is when it stopped flashing. Now let's go up in voltage, shift plus, 
e1, e2, e3, e4, e5. So e4 is where I need to bring it up to. So now I have to bring it back down. Negative, 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 e4. Okay, so we're doing e1, e2, e3, e4. Oh, so e3. My bad. Okay, um, you can see this is what it looks like. As I'm going down, you just keep testing it. Okay, so we need to go back up. E3. Alright, we're now E3. It's fine. You press the up arrow. Sometimes you have to press it twice. It says OK. Now let's see what it set it at. There's no error codes. 28.75. So 28.89 was before with E2. See, it's all over the place. Before, E2 would only bring me up to 28.89. Now E3 only brings me up to 28.75. So these hexadecimal numbers are completely worthless. All you gotta know is to get rid of all these flashing errors, all you gotta do is just set the voltage, bring it down till they stop flashing, then bring it back up till they start flashing, then bring them back down, and then bring it back up to the hexadecimal just before they started flashing. So pretty, pretty simple. Uh, that's how you deal with that, getting rid of these error codes. And for some reason it won't charge up to 29.4, it just goes up to 29.13-ish around there. So, um, I can't see any difference either if I bring it, if I set the APC to 29.43 or 29.29, those are the only two options. Uh, don't have it written here, but it doesn't matter. If I put to that, it just reads errors and it refuses to charge up the batteries, so... Not sure what's going on there. Uh, don't care. So, anyways, the only the big error problem I have, I should have had this breaker on the positive terminal. Uh, I didn't do that, so I'm gonna have to do that uh, in the very near future. Try and resolve that issue. But other than that, uh, I've soldered it directly into here. Um, this is an on/off. Just the light switches, they work perfectly. I haven't had a single problem, they don't heat up, um, so yeah, save money, use light switches, no big deal. So anyways, that works, that's done, alright, so next we're going to go on to, um, let's see, we're going to go on to idle voltage, which is a problem that I thought I solved, but I didn't. Alright, so I'm about to unplug it, it's consuming 2 watts, don't know why. Apparently consuming 2 watts. Yeah. I really don't know why. So, watch this. Okay, there's there's lights plugged in. There's three LED lights plugged in right now. Consuming 74 watts. Let's unplug it. Alright. Consuming 44 watts. So just idling it's consuming 44 watts, so um, that's a big problem, right? Uh, the only way I can recommend these uh, these APC inverters is if you get it for free and you're using it to run like a microwave. Um, like, don't use this to run light bulbs in your house. Don't use this to run your house. Use it like, say you're somewhere, if you've manage to get everything to run off of your batteries without an inverter and then if you got this for free you can use it to run the microwave but you have to set it up so that this thing is like right beside the microwave and then you turn this on and then you turn the microwave on and then you turn this thing off once you're done with the microwave that's the only way I can recommend these things um, I don't even know if they can run like something like a toaster oven I, I doubt they can run that because toaster ovens consume like insane amounts of power so um yeah that's that's that for uh for idle wattage i thought i had solved it but really there was i hadn't so it's frustrating uh let's do one more thing so this is just a stupid thing because i was trying to figure out how to brain dead start these things but i couldn't figure it out so 
I tried starting it using another inverter, plugged in, like plug it into another inverter. I just want to show you. See, that's what happens when, this is a modified sine wave inverter. This thing, when you just try to turn it on normally, it tries to synchronize to a staircase sine wave, which is really bad. Like, modified sine waves are, are complete garbage. Uh, you can watch lots of different YouTube videos about why. Um, Kernalgan or something. Kernalg, let's see what his name is. YouTuber. Knurlg Narg24. He has a good video on running microwaves using modified sine wave inverters and pure sine wave inverters. It's very good. So, anyways, um, yeah, you I tried that, so it's just interesting that it clicks because it's trying to synchronize to a modified sine wave inverter. So I'll plug it into my other inverter now. Alright, so we're gonna turn it on. It should start any second, and you'll see the light turn on. Takes a minute. Okay, well, I had to turn it on. So, anyways, um, yeah, see no issues at all. It's uh, right now it, this um, Go Power Pure Sine Wave Inverter is running those lights over there. Okay. So, yeah, see no issue. And then. I go and I turn this off, and it right away switches over. Now it's running off the battery. It's not running off of this other inverter. No issues. So that's just another case for why it's worth it to spend a lot of money on a really good pure sine wave inverter. And I just thought it was interesting, so I thought I'd share that. And yeah, pretty simple consuming a lot of power so just those three light bulbs are consuming 76 watts okay so these came into these are the the cool white um, these these ba these light bulbs can run from 10 volts all the way up to 42 volts DC and they're running off a buck converter and I just have my own Things. So anyways, at full voltage, all these four lights are very blinding, they hurt. They're consuming at most 40 watts. It's actually 36 if you bypass the buck converter. They consume like 36 watts for four light bulbs that are blindingly bright. Right, in comparison, this is why the system is so good. Right, you use a buck converter hook directly up and these these lights are like 650 each which isn't that expensive at all all right we'll turn it back down yeah these these lights are are not that expensive at all you can see the blue it really comes out in them but these are more for a working light like uh if you're in a living space you don't want uh cool white because the blue light kind of hurts your eyes. Um, it's not good for winding down and going to sleep. So you want the warm white for living spaces. This is good for working environments. So, Anyways, I just thought I'd show that. So see it's dimmed all the way down. And it ramps up. So this is how much it's consuming from there. At most 36 watts, right? So 36 watts versus these guys right here. You know, just these three really crappy light bulbs are consuming 75 watts. So that's why I would recommend, you know, getting these DC LED light bulbs and running them straight off of your power wall. Much better bang for your buck. Uh, and this thing at most is good for running microwaves. That's, and like your computer. Yeah. Pretty much. Uh, so yeah. Anyways, I hope you uh, liked the video. Hope you uh, found it interesting. Um, I also someone asked if you could float these, um, bring this set voltage, the float voltage all the way down to zero, but you can't because eventually it reads a bad battery, and that's not good. So you're just gonna have to bring bring the float voltage all the way down to about where this thing normally sits. 
and I'll have to do more testing and see how that works. So, yeah, you can't disable the um, the charging function where the UPS charges the batteries up. You can't disable that, but you can bring it way down so that it doesn't it doesn't turn on. So, anyways, I hope you like this video. I hope you um, um, found something uh, valuable or interesting. Watch my last video on how to use Hyper Terminal and how to use these things. Um, yeah, let me know what you think. Uh, let me know uh, if, if you have one of these, if you're using it. If you have figured out other things, please, uh, please post a comment. Let me know if you figured out some things that I didn't mention, some things that are useful. I'd, uh, I'd really appreciate that. So, yeah, um, like, comment, subscribe for more of this type of stuff. Now, I only, I prefer to stick with only talking about things related to the battery holders and the 18650 batteries. So I don't deal with 3S or 4S or any other uh, S. I'm straight 7S always. Uh, there's, there's way too much com complexity once you try to do different S's. <laughs> if that makes any sense. So, yeah, I'm just sticking with that. Thanks again, Andy Ham. Um, I'm going to do a few more things. I have a few more days, and I have your Christmas present ready and waiting for you once you uh, pick this up. But uh, we'll keep in contact and figure out um, when you want this back. Um, I'm pretty happy with most of the work with the Hyper Terminal at this point. So think I figured it all out, but we'll see. Anyways, thanks again. I really appreciate it. And everyone, Merry Christmas, Happy New Year, and have a great day. Bye.